Hello folks, I'm already on my road trip and I'm here at Rust Belt Garage with Jacob. Jacob, say hello to the people. Hello. And he is putting together an engine stand we picked up at Harbor Freight today so we can take apart the PT Bruiser engine. And I just wanted to let you all know that if you want constant updates of my crazy awesome road trip, please go follow me on Instagram at 802garage, I'll put a link in the description. And also like my Facebook page, which is also 802garage, again, link right at the top of the description. Thank you so much, hope you stay up to date, leave a comment, send me a message, all that good stuff. Thank you for the support everyone. What's good, 802 Garage? I just want to show you quickly what I'm doing for some trip prep before I go to Ohio, Michigan, Colorado, and then probably California, Oregon, and Washington, and back home. So, got to get the old beast ready. I am taking the 93 GC Subaru Impreza, and uh, check out my oil pan. Yeah, it's, it's all supposed to be like level with the bottom of that drain plug, but it clearly got dented somehow. I think it was in my ex-girlfriend's driveway during the winter, which was just crazy. It was a hellhole. And so, yeah, I just want to change that because even though it's been running just fine, I'm sure I'm not getting as efficient of pickup. I'm low on capacity. And before going, you know, 5,000 plus miles, I should probably fix that. And I'm also probably going to drop the exhaust real quick to fix things like that gasket leak, which is really bad. I'm just going to weld them up, honestly. And there's a weld back there that I've taken care of a few times that's really bad. But yeah, I just like it to be nice and quiet for the trip. It's going to be a wild ride, folks. Um, and it is already, I think, like 6.37 p.m. the day before I'm supposed to leave. So I have like less than 24 hours to, to finish the prep. Um, I'll give you some more updates. Thanks. And this was a fairly recent oil change with some decent oil. I think I used some Valvoline semi-synthetic. I believe it was 10W40, which really isn't completely ideal for this car, but it seems to like it. And so this oil shouldn't look too bad, but I think it has at least three to four thousand miles on it splat and it is warm that's why it's flowing so quickly so yeah nice and brown it's definitely ready to be changed i mean not that the color indicates anything obviously but given it the old sniff test it has a very very faint smell of fuel but overall it still looks like good oil to me yeah, yeah. I usually wear gloves for this, but I was dumb this time around. All right, here it comes. I think I got all the bolts out of the back. And no, I'm not prying hard with this middle screwdriver. Don't worry, my block's gonna be okay. Oh uh, yeah, doing this one-handed is dangerous work. <laughs> I think I need to go loosen the dip. The I think I need to go loosen the dipstick tube before. <laughs> I can try to take this off. So this is one thing that is kind of a pain about Subarus is you can't get the oil pan off without taking off the pickup, but that's pretty much okay anyway because you usually should replace the O-ring that's in the pickup. And uh, yeah, everything's looking good down here. Here is the old oil pan. You can see the pickup kind of sits back here. So luckily, I don't think it got bumped at all. You know, it looks completely fine to me. Uh, and otherwise, You can see it looks kind of speckly in the pan. That's actually remnants of the powder coating I did, but didn't hurt anything. It's all baked on. And there's the oil in there. All right, got myself the Ultra Black Maximum Oil Resistance, and uh, gonna try to lay a nice bead on this brand new Spectra Premium oil pan. Looks pretty good quality. It was on Amazon Warehouse. I think I paid 20 eight dollars for it 26 something like that and the only thing that i know of that's wrong with it is there's a little scuff down there by the drain plug uh, and i think there was one other minor cosmetic issue i think a little scuffing there so great deal on that as long as it fits properly but it should because uh, if they said it didn't fit properly amazon probably wouldn't have put it in a warehouse so uh, let's see how we go here Looks good to me. This stuff comes out a little different than the other RTV, it seems. I hope that doesn't mean that it got frozen and is bad or something, but should work. If anybody has any critique, leave it in the comments section, and I will, you know, consider what you have to say.
I've got this surface all prepped too. Should be ready to go. And you can also see I cleaned up back there so I wouldn't get the bolts dirty putting them back in. And I have to put that pan on right now because apparently with the ultra black, you were supposed to put it on immediately while it's still wet, not let it cure a little bit. So I gotta go, go, go. All right, so there you have it. Brand new pan, fully installed. I finger tightened the ball, waited about an hour, torqued them all down, even though I torqued them a tiny bit more than recommended I did five foot pounds, which is the lowest my wrench goes, probably not accurate. Did some uh, rust coating on this front core support, which is definitely beyond its days. And uh, in the morning I will put on the filter and put in the oil. So I'm probably gonna drop the exhaust, weld the crap out of that, don't think I'll put it on video. And then I still have to do that real life strut. So I'll check back in with you in the morning to see how I fared with all that and put in the oil and filter. What's up folks, uh, it's 1.30 a.m. Still, well, the day I'm supposed to leave now, and I just want to take you on a quick tour of my exhaust system and show you why I want to fix it up before I leave, and this is pretty good. You might ask, where does it leak, Aaron? And the answer is, it'd be easier to tell you where it doesn't leak, which was basically just the header flanges, because those gaskets were replaced at one point, and they're in remarkably good shape. So, so those were good, although I was missing a stud. It just fell out, apparently. I must not have tightened it enough originally. And uh, I've got one cool thing to show you, too. My O2 sensor socket itself is actually loose. You can probably see that play there. So gonna weld that up a little bit. And then uh, let's start from the front and work our way back. This joint doesn't appear to be leaking that I can see, but you know, still sketchy. And then uh, this one, might be able to tell there's a little issue there. And uh, obviously there's really not much flange left. So putting another gasket in there is extremely hopeless. So Gonna weld that up all the way around. Luckily that'll be pretty easy because there's still quite a quite a bit of metal here. It is rust, but it'll work. Uh, here is my redneck muffler bandage that I was actually quite proud of. That is a cut up steel can, like a soup can. And I put steel wool on the inside of it and then wrapped it in stainless clamps. That did a great job. Uh, however, I do think it may be leaking a little bit now. Either way, I'll probably take that off and weld it more. And then here is the insert pipe that I put in through there at one point to weld. And uh, that actually came through, and I think that's screwing up my donut gasket now, so I may have to cut that off like flush. That'd probably be a good idea. And so moving on, that's pieces of the donut gasket. Um, here is the donut gasket, which I have been beating on. It wasn't this bad before, but it was falling apart. And I did uh, widen out this flange at one point, or maybe it was that end, either way, because uh, my system wouldn't align because I didn't weld it perfectly, so that was a just an easy way to fix it. And then moving back further along, luckily I haven't sprung any leaks at this joint yet that I know of. And then here's a rear gasket, which I've actually repaired these flanges. You can see I welded washers there to use those to clamp. So there's a washer welded at each of those points to reinforce it, maybe even a couple. Uh, but unfortunately this gasket did blow out again. Moving on to the back. I think the can is good. The muffler is like is is solid. However, this has never lined up because this is from an all-wheel drive car and mine is front wheel drive. So I may kind of try to add a little extension onto this. So yeah, that's that's the exhaust system. Pretty much nothing, pretty much nothing is right with it. So I'm just gonna get to basically welding up all those cracks. I do have a new donut gasket, I do have new um, header gaskets, so I'll be putting those on. Uh, instead of using the old ones and hopefully it'll be quiet for my trip because as much as I like hearing the note of the car This one isn't particularly amazing. It just sounds like a nice running Subaru and uh, I don't want to be dealing with it the entire 5,000 plus miles, so I'll get back to you soon. Well, I was just uh, wire wheeling this one to get it ready to weld and that's a pretty big old gap there So I'm probably gonna use some kind of rod to help fill it, but you know, that's life. Well, there you go. Looks like crap. There's way too much metal on it, but uh, this welder's been acting up. I don't know exactly why, even on test pieces with really clean metal so it's not just the ground. Uh, I think it may have something to do with the wire sitting for way too long, but I'm not sure because I haven't used the welder in a long time. 
Anyway, obviously a time-consuming process. I have like three more of these to go, and I have to do the other side of this one still, so I'll do the rest of it off camera. Woo! All right, quick note, look, there's the trick. See, hood, nice and vertical. Mm-hmm, it does work. All right, so I just wanna show you what I did to the exhaust. I cleaned up the headers, and then I welded the crap out of every joint. And yes, there's like way more weld than I need, but this is not a precision welder. It's on flux core. It was kind of malfunctioning in the first place. And because this is so rusty, you basically just have to keep laying in metal until it fills in the hole. And no, there's not metal protruding into the exhaust pipes. It's gonna be fine. Uh, welded up the O2 bung, welded the crap out of that. This was the really, really bad one that was underneath my redneck muffler bandage and repaired that pretty well and just kind of put in some sort of support lines to hopefully help it not break. Maybe it'll make it worse, who knows. Uh, didn't have to do much of that other than clean out some of the gasket. And then I did clean up this weld too, or I should say weld up this hole also. Gave that a little bit of support. And I tacked on my little chrome tip because it was falling off and rattling. And then the last thing I wanna show you is that I did make this fit pretty much flawlessly so it goes right around that little pipe in there that was actually an extension I put in and it's pretty well centered and that goes in there and then I have some new hardware to replace the spring bolts because well these guys are not gonna do the job anymore the other one is way worse doesn't even have any threads left in it so got all that and found a bolt to replace the missing stud which are acting as bolts right now anyway so Exhaust is gonna go on and then I'm gonna go to bed. It is way later than I care to admit. It is actually 5.49 a.m. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have this done within the next 30 minutes. I'm gonna use some Ultra Copper RTV on the gaskets, which I am actually gonna reuse the old gaskets because they are way better quality than the new chintzy crap that I got, which was Apex brand. It just, these look like junk. They don't even have fire rings. They're really thin on the outside. Those things suck. These things, beefy. I think they were Bozel or Walker. Not really sure. So hopefully I'll have this done pretty soon. I can shower, go to bed. Then I just have to do my strut. What's happening, folks? It is the next day and it's a little after four and I wanted to leave by now. So I'm a bit behind schedule and I actually still have to put in oil and change my real life strut. I've basically been cleaning and packing all day. Oh well, such is life. Wouldn't be in a two garage if I wasn't late, right? Uh, so I do have a K&N Silver Performance, I think it is, filter to put in there. Like I said, I looked these up and they're supposed to be really high quality. This is the smaller filter for Subarus. I like to run the bigger ones on the older cars, but it'll be fine. It's synthetic. And uh, some Castrol Edge 0W40 Full Synthetic. I figured that would last pretty well on a road trip, so let's go ahead and throw that in. Check this out, it comes plastic wrapped. I guess it's supposed to be a pre-lubricated seal and this is like the big O-ring type. It's interesting, but uh, I'm gonna give it a little more lube and fill it with some oil anyway. All right, that's all topped off, and I did put in a little bit of power steering fluid, and I'm gonna see how quiet the car actually is since I fixed the exhaust and there's oil in it and all that good stuff. Here, we'll, uh, we'll put you on V10 cam. bad still sounds like there might be a small leak somewhere but it's way better and engine's nice and quiet with that oil so good to go okay 802 garage it is about 8 15 p.m so over four hours later than i wanted to leave but wouldn't be 802 garage if i wasn't terrible at time estimation i got the old 93 impreza all fixed took it down the road it's really quiet, uh, which means I can hear the noises in the front. I think I need a ball joint, and uh, the rear left strut is not knocking, which is great. 
and I'm ready to go other than putting some stuff in the car you can see I've got a lot of it behind me right now and I'm headed so this was definitely a trial I've probably put in about 20 hours of car work in the past oh I don't know you know 36 hours or so I only got four hours of sleep last night but this was really good for me because I had to push myself and it's just a reminder that if I want to I can do eight to ten hours of work in a day and just knock stuff out so it's a really big motivator for when I get back I am extremely disappointed I didn't get to test fit the v10 before I left but I also want to make that a really quality video so maybe it's for the best and when I get back I promise there's gonna be more v10 content and Believe me when I say there are some really exciting things happening on this trip and I think you all are going to be very, very psyched. I don't know when I'll be able to edit this video, but I'm going to try to do it soon. Thank you all so much for watching 802 Garage. I'm going to have a lot of fun on this trip. Hit me up on social media. Follow me on Instagram because I'll definitely be posting there a lot while I'm on my trip as long as I remember. And also on Facebook. And, uh, you know, just stay tuned. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Like the video. Leave a comment. You know I love talking to y'all. <sighs> Wish me luck. See you soon, Ada's Garage. Oh, and I almost forgot. Y'all want to see a really blown strut? Yeah, that's real good. So that's what was causing the knocky knock. I mean, look at that. Just completely, utterly fried. <laughs>